Good morning here in Los Angeles. It's uh, Valerie Milano, the senior editor of The Hollywood Times, and I am so happy to have our guest today from the movie Invincible. And uh, he is in Montreal, which is three hours later. So I'm going to let him introduce himself. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, hey, thank you so much to you. Um, yeah, so my name is uh, Vincent René Lorty. Uh, I am the film director of the short film Invincible. Um, and it's uh, Invincible is the story of my childhood best friend who tragically passed away when I was when, when he was 14 years old and I was the same age. And so the 14, the, 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 the short film uh, tells the story of the 48 hours before um, he passed away. Thank you so much. Um, and it, and you said that you speak French and we're going to just keep it, we keep it slow because I think your, your English is perfect. So I'm not worried <laughs> <Yeah>. about it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so it's an 11 year, 11 year project. Wow. Um, how does one stay focused on something this long as still managed to do other magnificent work? And Thank you. I mean, to be honest, it, it is, it is my first narrative short film, but but in the meantime, I did a lot of um, music videos, art films, experimental short film as well. Um, I guess like, you know, um, I, I've, I've been working on that film since I graduated from university, uh, which is, I think, six years ago. Um, and so when I graduated, I, I started this uh, production company, which is called Telescope Film, which is also a production company that's that uh, produce uh, our short film. And so and, and the idea be, behind that production company was really just to kind of like stay with my friends and do projects together. And this is what we did. And we and I think that kind of friendship allowed me to to, you know, like you just mentioned, to stay focused. Like I, I was with them and they really pushed me to continue writing and to keep going, even though at first it was really hard to get financial help and to, um, you know, because it's it's also a first film. So you know, they, we were all together in that project, uh, me, the producer and the cinematographer, which, you know, we were the team who started the production company. And so what I, I worked on that film for, yes, um, five, six years, but during that time while I was waiting for financial help or stuff like that I I I did a lot of music video and 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 a lot of different projects and as well I also started to work on my first feature film it's it's hard for me to work on many projects but I guess like because I I could work on that during like sm small amount of time in the last in the last uh, five six years it, it allowed me to like keep going yeah that there's very few times where the young man experienced joy yeah. one of which being when he set off the sprinklers right in, yeah. in his room why was this moment important to highlight in the film yeah i think um again like what i remember what i remember from that friend when i knew him was actually all these moments of joy all these moments of like friendship and love and and kindness and empathy that he, he was he was feeling so for me like i know like i i know it's a story it's a very very dark story it's, it's a story about someone who we know from the start is gonna die but i wanted throughout the film to really understand how much love that person has to give to his family and to his friend how much empathy he had like i so it's it, it was for me, even though there is little moments of again joy and and um, and you know you just kind of like smile, I would say it it was important for me to showcase that. And for example, like moment of like the the the, the sprinklers, it was a moment for him, like it, you know where he felt really at his place, where he felt he could finally breathe, and he he, he didn't care about the consequences, he didn't care about anything like that. It was just like I want if i want to do that right now and that was one of his biggest quality and also one of his biggest um you know kind of uh it, it, it was it, it was sometimes really against him when he was doing something like that he could really go against him so it was for me it was i think that moment was a, a good representation of him too and uh, tell the audience where was invincible filmed and how long did the production take um, so the production was around 
uh, six or seven days. Uh, it was filmed in Montreal, where I'm from. Um, and it was actually most of the film in a juvenile center was filmed in the exact same juvenile center where my friend was at that time. So it was a... Um, kind of a very powerful thing, but also it, it was both powerful, but also sometimes really strange to be there in that in that place. We did change a lot of the art direction. We painted the walls and everything, but it was still like the same, like it was not the same, but it was very similar rooms, very similar dorm. And 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 so I think it gave the whole team as and 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 also all the cast that kind of feeling that they were in a real juvenile center. And it helped everybody to both play in front of the camera, but also work behind and understand the stake of the of the project too. And so can you talk about the research that you did? Um, what went into it, um, you know, accurately bringing this tragic story to life? Yeah. Um, it, you know, that's that story really stayed with me for... I like until probably until like five or six years ago, it was always in my head. I, I knew something wasn't clear about it. I knew I, I, I had to like contact the family again, the friends and try to understand a bit better what had, hap what, what had happened. And one of the first thing that uh, came from this discussion one of, uh, was, you know, I had a discussion with his dad where he mentioned that maybe, you know, maybe it could have been also a suicide. It wasn't sure, but this idea that it wasn't an, an accident, it was but maybe more than that, it more complicated than that, made me also understand that I didn't really know my friend. He, um, I think, like, my, my friend had some issues and it was a lot of pain inside and really understand when I was 14 years old. And so I started a lot of research, as just mentioned, like uh, I, I met a lot of uh, people working, you know, at the juvenile center, but also, um, you know, his family again, his friends and people were just working in mental health uh, doctors uh, um, or health, you know, just in general, just to understand what someone like him was going through and 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 I so I put all the 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 the, the pieces together and I tried to you know at the end of the day what I really wanted to do was to showcase um was to present as someone that was really close to the real Mark like in terms of his emotion in terms of like how he interact with other people when it comes to the real story I had to rewrite some of the stuff. And I was really always open about that. Like I always told the family, this is going to be a fiction. Like there is some element of this that comes from my imagination and others that comes from the real story. But the main thing about that research was I wanted that the main character to be as close as possible to what I remember and what people remember of, of Mark, of the real Mark. Yeah. Well, it's pretty powerful. And we appreciate you bringing this story, you know, to life here. And and are you working on anything else? Um, thinking yes. about working on anything else. <laughs> um, yes, yes, I am. I am. Uh, I've been working for the last year on on my first feature film. Um, and you know, it's a it's it's. I've been doing that while distributing the film while going to festival. But it's still like I think I'm really excited. Like after I know after the Oscars, I have one project to jump into and to, you know, to uh, start um, uh, dreaming again because you know, it's been it's been a, a quite a long time since I've I've really done that. But this project keeps me up. I keep it keeps me up at night. It's it's um, it's something that I can't wait to tell to other people and to share with the world. So that's that's the project I'm working on right now. I can't say too much about it, okay. but uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, I think I think um, I'm yeah. I, I would just say that I'm really excited about about just uh, going back into that project too. Good. Well, please continue to keep us posted. The Hollywood Times, uh, HollywoodTimes.net. Um, you can also find us on um, the Hollywood Times official, our YouTube channel. And how can we find you and your projects and, and, and Invincible, which is nominated for an Oscar. Congratulations for a short film. Thank you. Thank um, you. Yeah, yeah I guess you can tell us your social media or your websites, whatever we can find uh, our viewers and our, our readers can find you on. Let us of know. Course. I mean, 
you can find Invincible, uh, the short film Invincible everywhere on Instagram and on, on Facebook is Invincible short film. As for my private uh, Instagram and my work as well, uh, it, you can find it on my full name. So it's vincentrenelorty.com. Uh, or at um, for and for on Instagram is my full name as well, so you can find me there. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much again for for joining us at the Hollywood Times, and we look forward to to seeing more of your work and uh, keep us all posted. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good day and good luck uh, at the Oscars. All right. Bye. Have a good one. Bye bye.